The Charleston Peninsula has 14 distinct neighborhoods, and in this video, I'm going to go over each neighborhood of the historic district of downtown Charleston, located on the Charleston Peninsula, including the French Quarter, South Abroad, and more, and I will go over some of the pros and cons of living in each area. The Charleston Peninsula is the location of the historic district of Charleston and is often referred to as a living museum. In 1670, the first English settlers came to the Charleston area to Charlestown Landing in West Ashley, but quickly moved to the Charleston Peninsula in 1680 to the location we will be touring today. This is the location of the original Walden city of Charleston, and at one point, Charleston even had a drawbridge leading into the city. Charleston is one of the most well-preserved historic areas in the country and is filled with antebellum homes that were built in the 17 and 1800s. Before we go over each neighborhood, let me give you a brief description of the Charleston Peninsula as a whole. The peninsula is surrounded by water. To the east, you have the Cooper River and the Ravenel Bridge, which leads to Mount Pleasant, a very nice city where you will find things like Shem Creek and the USS Yorktown. To the west, if you cross the bridge going over the Ashley River, you will be in West Ashley. You can also take the James Island Connector from downtown Charleston, and if you cross James Island, you can visit the closest beach to Charleston at Folly Beach. Charleston Harbor is where the rivers connect and will lead to the Atlantic Ocean. The harbor is the location of Fort Sumter where the first shots of the Civil War were fired. If you are looking at homes for sale here, Highway 17, also known as Crosstown, divides the Charleston Peninsula into two different areas, north of Crosstown and south of Crosstown. South of Crosstown is the location of the historic district of Charleston and is where you will find most of the older antebellum homes in the Charleston downtown area. The area north of Crosstown has more affordable homes for sale, and most of these homes were built in the 1900s. Some of these areas north of Crosstown are more residential neighborhoods with a ton of charm. The area north of Crosstown also includes Hampton Park and the Citadel Military College. If you are considering moving to the peninsula, you need to know that Charleston is a top tourist destination and draws in millions of visitors every year. The entire Charleston Peninsula is going to have tours, but the majority of the tourists will be in the downtown area, King Street, Meeting Street, as well as the French Quarter in some areas of South Abroad, Ansonboro, and Ragboro. These areas will have a lot of foot traffic, vehicles, and horse carriage tours. The great thing about living in these areas with most of the tourists is there's a lot to do nearby. If you live here, you can walk out your home and have many great restaurants and much more right outside your front door. But if you do not want to live near the hustle and bustle of downtown Charleston, you may want to consider moving to one of the other neighborhoods on the peninsula. If you are going to purchase a home in downtown Charleston, if you decide to make any changes to the home, it may need to be approved by the Board of Architectural Review, or BAR, and I'll put a link to their website below. Make sure to stay till the end of the video because I'm going to go over some of the things in more detail about living on the peninsula that you need to know about, including flooding, parking, taxes, and more. If you'd like a copy of the neighborhood map that I'm using in this video, or if you'd like to browse homes for sale or for rent in these areas, you can go to my website at garrisoncharleston.com and click on the downtown link. If you like this video, please click the like and subscribe buttons below as I'll be making more videos about Charleston in the future. Let's start the neighborhood tour, and we'll begin at the very tip of the Charleston Peninsula in a neighborhood known as South Abroad. South Abroad is one of the most beautiful neighborhoods in the country and is filled with antebellum homes. When people think of Charleston, this is the type of neighborhood that they're thinking of. This area has a wide variety of architectural styles in some of the largest homes built in the downtown area, dating back to the 1700s. Broad Street was given its name due to being the broadest street in downtown Charleston and is a little over a mile long. Broad Street extends from the southwest end of the peninsula from the elbow at Lockwood Drive and stops at the Old Exchange and Provost Dungeon on East Bay Street. The neighborhood south of this street is known as South of Broad. The eastern side of South of Broad Street will be more commercial with many restaurants and businesses nearby, including Oak Steakhouse and America's oldest liquor store at the Tavern. This area is also home to the Four Corners of Law, located at the intersections of Broad and Meeting Street. This intersection has four different buildings representing four different laws, including God's Law at St. Michael's Church, which is Charleston's oldest surviving church, Federal Law at the Federal Courthouse and Post Office, County Law at the Charleston County Courthouse, and City Law at Charleston City Hall. At the tip of the peninsula is the Battery and White Point Garden. This is a very popular area for tourists and locals. You can come get a great view of Charleston Harbor, Fort Sumter, and the historic mansions located here. This is also the location of the Edmonston Allison House Museum, where the Confederate General Beauregard watched the attack on Fort Sumter. Rainbow Row is located on East Bay Street in the South of Broad neighborhood, and is another very popular location for tourists. Rainbow Row gets its name from the 13 homes here that are painted in pastel colors dating back to the 1700s. This is one of the most visited and photographed sites in Charleston. The east side of South of Broad will see the majority of the tourists due to being the location of the Battery and Waypoint Garden, Rainbow Row, many historic homes, horse carriage tours, and restaurants. 
The northeastern section of this neighborhood borders Waterfront Park, which is another very popular tourist area. This location also has the historic Charleston Foundation along the harbor, Hazel Park, which has a playground, tennis court, and dog park, and the Carolina Yacht Club. The western end of South Abroad is more residential and has less tourists, but if you live here, you'll be further away from things to do. The western end also has Horse Lot Park and will be closer to Colonial Lake, which is located north of Broad Street in the neighborhood known as Harleston Village that we will go over later. The real estate for sale in South Abroad is some of the most expensive real estate in the area. There are large homes for sale here, and if you're looking for more affordable options to live here, there are some condos and townhomes available as well. A lot of the historic homes in downtown Charleston have been divided into condo units. There are also a few other buildings with condos in this neighborhood, including the Fort Sumter House, located right next to the Battery in White Point Garden at 1 King Street. French Quarter The French Quarter is in the heart of downtown Charleston and is a very popular tourist destination. The French Quarter gets its name from a large number of French residents and French Huguenots that were located here. The French Quarter is a must-see if you're in the Charleston area and has many popular locations and tourist attractions. On the east end of the neighborhood, you will find the iconic Pineapple Fountain at Waterfront Park. During colonial times, pineapples were very expensive and rare, and it was the ultimate symbol of hospitality if you were able to obtain one for your guests. Make sure to look for pineapple decorations throughout the city when you're visiting Charleston. Waterfront Park also has a pier where you can take a water taxi to various locations, including the Maritime Center near the South Carolina Aquarium, Charleston Harbor Resort and Marina, and Patriots Point in Mount Pleasant. Another park located on the other end of the French Quarter is Washington Square, where you will find a statue of George Washington and a replica of the Washington Monument. The Charleston City Market is located at the north end of the French Quarter. The market is one of the oldest markets in the United States, and it is open every day of the year except for Christmas. The land for the City Market was originally donated to the City of Charleston by one of our founding fathers, Charles Pinkney. The city market extends for four city blocks and is a great place to get souvenirs from Charleston, including sweetgrass baskets. This craft originated in Africa and has been passed down through generations. Charleston is known as the Holy City, and if you visit, you will see church steeples everywhere. Many of the historic churches that are located here are in the French Quarter, including St. Philip's Church, built in 1836, the French Huguenot Church, built in 1844, and the Circular Congregational Church, built in 1890. The French Quarter also has one of Charleston's few remaining cobblestone streets, located on Chalmers Street. There are no stones in Charleston, so if you see stones while you're here, they came from somewhere else. These stones came from rivers in England as ballast stones on ships that were used to add weight to the ship as they sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Because there are no stones in Charleston, most of the homes that appear to be made out of stone are actually made out of brick. Brick was not a popular building material when these homes were made, so many homes have stucco placed over the brick and then the stucco was scored to give the appearance of stone. One home that is made out of stone is on Chalmers Street and is known as the Pink House. This home is made out of imported Bermuda stone, which gives it its pink color. This home is one of the oldest remaining homes in Charleston and was built circa 1712 and is possibly even older than that. You also find the old Slave Mart Museum on Chalmers Street. The oldest public building remaining in Charleston can be found at the Powder Magazine. The powder magazine was built in 1713 and was used to store ammunition so Charleston could defend itself from invaders. The French Quarter is the location of the first theater built in the United States that was specifically for theatrical performances at the Dock Street Theater. The original theater was built in 1736 but burned down in one of Charleston's great fires. The building that is there now was built in 1809. The French Quarter also has many places to shop, amazing restaurants, art galleries, and is a great place to live if you want to be just a few steps away from many things to do. The majority of homes for sale in the French Quarter are condos and townhomes. You also find some single family houses here, but a lot of the homes here have been divided into condo units. The French Quarter does have a lot of tourists, and the real estate here is more expensive than most of the other areas on the peninsula. King Street This street stretches all the way across the peninsula, but for this tour, I'll be focusing on the downtown area of King Street. King Street is a very historic street and is over 200 years old. This is one of the most famous shopping streets in the country and is a popular location for tourists, college students, nightlife, live music, great restaurants, and more. You can also come to Second Sunday on King Street every month where they will close part of the street from vehicle traffic where you can listen to live music, go shopping, and eat some great food. King Street has three different areas along the street including Upper King Street, known as the Design and Dining District, Middle King Street, or the Fashion District, and Lower King Street, also known as the Antique District. 
Upper King Street is located in between Calhoun Street and Spring Street and has a lot of great restaurants, including Hall's Chop House. This is a great place to go to eat a steak and has consistently been rated as one of the best fine dining restaurants in the country. Located at the intersection of King and Calhoun Street, you'll find a large park at Marion Square. This is the site of the former Citadel Military College and the building here is now an Embassy Suites Hotel. There will also be a farmer's market at Marion Square on Saturdays for part of the year. Middle King Street is a very popular area for shopping and has some well-known shops and clothes designers including Louis Vuitton, Kate Spade, and Steve Madden. Lower King Street is located between Market Street and Broad Street. In this area of King Street, you will find some of the best antique shopping in the country, including the George C. Berlant & Company Antique Shop. If you'd like to live on King Street, you will have a ton of things to do nearby. Real estate for sale on King Street is primarily going to be condos that are located above the businesses here, and this area is going to have a lot of year-round tourists. Harleston Village The neighborhood known as Harleston Village was one of the first suburbs of historic Charleston and is located between Broad Street to the south, Calhoun Street to the north, King Street to the east, and the Asher River to the west. At the eastern end of this neighborhood is one of the oldest and most beautiful colleges in the country at the College of Charleston, established in 1770. At the south end of this neighborhood, you will find Colonial Lake. This is a great lake to take a walk around and view the beautiful and historic homes surrounding the lake. Just across the street from the lake is General William Moultrie Playground and Park, where you will find pickleball and tennis courts. On the western border of Harleston Village is the Ashley River. There are multiple marinas on this side of the peninsula along the river, including the Safe Harbor Charleston City Marina, the Ashley Marina, and the Safe Harbor Bristol. Another close marina on the other side of the river in West Ashley is the Ripley Light Marina. There is a great restaurant near this marina called California Dreamin', and I recommend you stop in and try the sheet crab soup here. There are boat slips for sale and for rent at these marinas. This may be a good area for you if you're a boater. There are currently a couple marinas in Charleston that even allow liveaboards, so some people do live on their boat. You can browse boat slips for sale at garrisoncharleston.com and get more information about these marinas. The northwestern end of Harleston Village borders Calhoun Street. Right across the street, you have the medical district and great hospitals at Roper Hospital, the Medical University of South Carolina, or MUSC, and the VA Hospital. You also have MUSC Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital. Houston Village is also home to the Old Charleston Jail, which was operational from 1802 to 1939 and held many notorious criminals over the years, including pirates, Civil War POWs, and Lavinia Fisher. And this jail is available to tour. At the northern end of Harleston Village is Cannon Park, a 2.7 acre park that is a popular location for dog owners. The columns at this park are all that remain of the old Charleston Museum following a fire in 1981. Harleston Village has a lot of large single family homes and also has some townhomes and condos, including condos in the nearby Ashley House where you can get a good water view, and condos at the Baker House near Colonial Lake. The western end of Harleston Village may be a good location for you if you'd like to live close to downtown Charleston but want to be a little further away from all the action. The east end of Harleston Village is bordered by King Street and the College of Charleston, and this will be the busier side of Harleston Village that will see the majority of the tourism. Ansonboro. Above the French Quarter on the eastern side of the peninsula is Ansonboro. This neighborhood borders King Street to the west, Calhoun Street on the northern side, Market Street and the City Market to the south, and the Cooper River to the east. Ansonboro is another neighborhood on the peninsula with a lot to do nearby, great restaurants within walking distance, and has one of the few large grocery stores on the Charleston Peninsula at Harris Teeter on East Bay Street. The southern and western sides of this neighborhood is where you'll find most of the restaurants, things to do, and tourists. The south end borders the Charleston City Market, and some of the popular restaurants in this area include Hank's Seafood Restaurant, Peninsula Grill, Kaminsky's Dessert Cafe, Fig, and Hyman's Seafood located on Meeting Street. At the northeastern side of Ansonboro, you will find another popular location for tourists at Liberty Square. The South Carolina Aquarium and Fort Sumter Visitor Education Center are both located here. The aquarium is a very popular area for families to visit and has sea turtles, a touch tank, bald eagle, and much more. The aquarium also has a sea turtle care center where it will provide treatment for injured sea turtles. The Fort Sumter Visitor Education Center has a museum inside and is one of the two departure points for a boat tour out to Fort Sumter. The other departure point being at Patriots Point in Mount Pleasant. This location also has a Charleston Maritime Center where you can take a water taxi. This is also the departure point for the Schooner Pride, an 84 foot tall ship that is modeled after an 18th century vessel. I definitely recommend that you tour Charleston Harbor on this ship if you get a chance. This neighborhood also has the best selection of condo units on the peninsula, and some of these condos have a great water view. 
A few of the buildings located here include Dockside Condominiums, Two Wharfside Street, the Anson House, and the Gadsden. Also located in this area is Gadsden Barrel Park, a very popular location for families and some of these condo buildings have a great view of this park. The Charleston Gilly Art Center is another attraction in Ansonboro and is a great performing arts center. Ansonboro is also home to the Spoleto Festival, which is a very popular performing arts festival. Radcliffe Borough Radcliffe Borough is bordered by Calhoun Street to the south, King Street to the east, and the Medical District to the west. Due to its location, Radcliffe Borough is a very popular location for medical professionals and students, College of Charleston students, and anyone that would like to live close to the downtown area at a more affordable price than some of the other neighborhoods. Radcliffe Borough is also home to Ashley Hall on the western end, a private school for girls. The majority of tourists in Radcliffe Borough will be on the eastern side near King Street. You will have a lot of great restaurants nearby and a farmer's market at Marion Square. If being near a hospital or medical building is important to you, this may be a good neighborhood as well. There is a small park bordering the northern end at Simington Park. Cannon Park is also within short walking distance, as is the College of Charleston, which is a beautiful location to take a walk. Ragboro. The Ragboro neighborhood is located just above Ansonboro and Calhoun Street, and is home to Marion Square and one of the oldest museums in America at the Charleston Museum, which was established in 1773. This museum has a great collection of historic items, and I definitely recommend you visit if you get a chance. You can also tour two historic homes in Ragborough at the Joseph Manacle House and at the Aiken Rett House Museum, or bring your kids to the Children's Museum of the Low Country. Ragborough borders King Street to the west, and you'll be close to a lot of great restaurants in this neighborhood, including Halt's Chop House, the Darling Oyster Bar, and Virginia's on King. On the eastern side of Ragborough is Bay Street Beer Garden, a great place to stop in and have a beer. Along with Marion Square, there are a few other small parks located in the Ragboro neighborhood, including Rag Mall Park. You will have a lot to do within a short walking distance from Ragboro, especially on the western side. Cannonboro and Elliot Boro. This combined neighborhood is bordered by Highway 17 or Crosstown, so you will be able to get on and off the peninsula to West Ashley, Mount Pleasant, or up Interstate 26 very quickly. This area has also seen a lot of revitalization in recent years, and a lot of the homes here have been renovated. Cannonboro and Elliott Borough includes a portion of Upper King Street to the east, and you'll have a lot of great restaurants near this neighborhood, including Prohibition and the Ordinary Seafood Restaurant. This neighborhood borders the Medical District to the west, and you will find some condo buildings in this area near Highway 17 at the B Street Lofts, which is right across the street from the VA Hospital, and B Street Flats at the intersection of President Street. There are not many parks nearby this neighborhood. Simington Park and DeReef Park are located near the southern border. There is a walking bridge that you can take to Mitchell Playground on the other side of Crosstown, and here you'll find a larger park and playground. This neighborhood may be a good option for medical professionals working at one of the hospitals, or anyone that would like to live south of Crosstown at a more affordable price than some of the other neighborhoods. Eastside. Another area that has seen a lot of revitalization recently is Eastside, also known as Hampstead Village. This neighborhood is located on the eastern side of the peninsula, and there's a large terminal located here, so there are no waterfront homes available, although you may be able to find some with a water view. East side is bordered by Upper King Street and East Bay Street, and there are a lot of restaurants around this neighborhood, including the very popular Taco Boy, which is a great place to bring the family. You will also find some good places to eat at the Cigar Factory, that has recently seen some major renovations. The Cigar Factory is a very unique mixed-use building, where you can do some shopping and eat some great food. Parks in the east side neighborhood include Hampstead Square, and there is a park and pool located on Jackson Street at Martin Luther King Jr. Pool. This is also one of the locations that you can get onto the walking path at the Arthur Ravenel Bridge. The bridge is about two and a half miles long and connects downtown Charleston to Mount Pleasant, and is a very popular location for joggers. East side may be a good option for people that would like to live south of Crosstown at a more affordable price than most of the other neighborhoods. All right, those were all the neighborhoods that are south of Crosstown. Now let's go over the neighborhoods north of Crosstown. The neighborhoods north of Crosstown may be a good option for some people that want to live on the peninsula, but at a more affordable price than the areas south of Crosstown. Some of these neighborhoods here are more residential than the locations downtown with less commotion. Many of the areas north of Crosstown are seeing a lot of revitalization as well. There are some older historic homes available north of Crosstown, but for the most part, these homes are newer than the homes that are in the downtown area most of which were built in the 1900s. West Side. The West Side neighborhood is located just off Highway 17 to the north. The western end of this neighborhood is located along the Ashley River, and here you will find the Bristol Condominiums and Marina, 
Brittle Bank Park, where there is a playground and fishing dock, you also find Joe Riley Park, also known as the Joe, where the Charleston River Dogs minor league baseball team play their baseball games. Actor Bill Murray is a co-owner of this team, and you will have a great time attending these games. Just across the street from the Bristol is a public supermarket. There is also a hotel in this area and some other commercial buildings. Moving over to the east, you have the Arthur W. Christopher Community Center, where you will find a pool, baseball fields, basketball court, soccer field, and more. Across the street from this center is the Johnson Haygood Memorial Stadium, where the Citadel Bulldogs College football team play their games. Near the stadium, you will also find the Jack Adams Tennis Center, where there are six tennis courts. The area over to the east and west side is more residential, and this is where you will find the majority of homes, in Mitchell Playground. The area near Crosstown and King Street has some great restaurants and taverns. The Recovery Room Tavern is located in this area, and for a number of years has been the number one seller of 12-ounce PBR cans in the United States. Also in this area is Leon's Restaurant and Oyster Bar, a great place to eat some seafood. Hampton Park Terrace This small neighborhood is located around Hampton Park, and at 60 acres, Hampton Park is the largest park on the peninsula. Hampton Park is a great place to bring your family, take your dog on a walk, or go for a jog. The park has a beautiful pond and fountain, picnic tables, trails, a playground, and more. This may be a great neighborhood for you if you enjoy having a green space and trees nearby. Also located in this area is the Citadel Military College. The Citadel has been in this location since 1922, when the school moved from its prior location at Marion Square in downtown Charleston. If you get a chance, you can attend one of the dress parades at the Citadel, which are open to the public. Wagner Terrace Wagner Terrace is a very charming residential neighborhood that is located north of Hampton Park and borders the Ashley River to the west. Most of the homes here were built in the early to mid 1900s, but there are some newer custom homes in this area as well, and some waterfront and marshfront properties along the Ashley River. Wagner Terrace is more residential than most of the neighborhoods on the peninsula, but there are still some great restaurants nearby, including Moe's Tavern and the Rutledge Cab Company, which is co-owned by actor Bill Murray. Wagner Terrace also has Kareen Jones Park that has a playground, garden, tennis courts, basketball courts, and a large green space. The neighborhood mainly has single-family homes available, but some townhomes and condos as well. North Central North Central is located along Interstate 26 and King Street, borders Wagner Terrace, and is another area that is seeing a lot of great revitalization. North Central is one of the most affordable areas to look for a home on the Charleston Peninsula. If you live in North Central, you will be close to Hampton Park and some great restaurants, including the very popular Rodney Scott's Barbecue. You will also be able to get on and off the peninsula very quickly. North Central also has one of the few larger grocery stores on the peninsula, located at the Food Line on King Street. You will find mainly single-family houses in this neighborhood, as well as a few apartment buildings, condos, and townhomes. North Morrison Another neighborhood in this general area is North Morrison, or NOMO, and is also known as East Central. These areas have all seen a lot of renovation and revitalization recently, and there are a lot of industrial and commercial buildings, breweries, and restaurants here. Charleston is sometimes referred to as Silicon Harbor due to the large number of tech companies located here, and many of these companies are located in this area of Charleston, also called the Neck of the Peninsula. You can find some great barbecue restaurants in the North Morrison area at Lewis Barbecue and Home Team Barbecue, or you can go have a beer on the rooftop at Revelry Brewing Company. North Morrison is a smaller neighborhood, and there are some houses, townhomes, and condo units available here. That is the end of the neighborhood tour. Now I'm gonna go over a few other things you need to know about living on the Charleston Peninsula. First, let's go over flooding. The area around Charleston is known as the low country and is prone to flooding. There are certain areas and streets that are more likely to flood. And if you're purchasing a home here, you may be required to have flood insurance on the property. Flood insurance can range in price from a few hundred dollars per year to thousands of dollars, depending on the elevation of the home and the location. Flood insurance is usually very affordable for newer homes since they have been elevated, but a lot of the older homes in downtown Charleston have not been elevated. It is important to get an elevation certificate and to talk to an insurance agent about what a specific property will cost in flood insurance. Flood Zone X is the area with the least flooding risk, and there's a small section in downtown Charleston that is Flood Zone X. You can go online and view the FEMA flood zone maps, and this will give you a good idea of different flood zones, and I'll put a link below. Parking. Parking in downtown Charleston can be very limited depending on the property. Most homes have off-street parking, but some homes may not have a reserved parking space, and you might have to park on the street or pay for a parking space. If you own or rent a home downtown, you can get a parking decal from the city of Charleston at a very affordable price. 
taxes. South Carolina has one of the lowest property taxes in the nation. If you'd like to get an idea of what you will be paying in property taxes if you purchase a home downtown, you can go to the Charleston County Tax Estimator website. But keep in mind, this is just an estimate and the rates may change. If you will be purchasing a home as a primary residence, you can select the 4% rate. If you will be purchasing a second home or a vacation property, select the 6% rate. And this should give you a rough estimate of what you will be paying in property taxes. Thank you for watching my neighborhood tour. I will soon be doing more tours of other areas around Charleston, so please click the like and subscribe button below if you'd like to see these videos. If you're considering moving to Charleston, you can give me a call or text anytime at 843-769-1836, and I'll be happy to answer any additional questions you have about living in this area. Thanks for watching.